A red tsunami is brewing this November after San Francisco ousts a bunch of leftist school board members. Another story, news story, that will disappear when the media finds out what's really going on. Uh, and it goes against their narrative. And Eric Adams, the mayor of New York City, just proves he's the typical Democrat. This is Gene, and you're listening to Dumbasses Talking Politics. <laughs> Hey, hey, this is Gene. Welcome back to Dumbasses Talk and Politics. Hope you guys had a great day yesterday. Okay, so let's get straight to the news. Uh, Democrats are not getting it, and there are more signs that this November is going to be very ugly for them in the midterm elections. It also shows that we might be winning the culture war now. Now that we've actually decided to fight the culture war, this is happening. Uh, even dem radical Democrats like Ilhan Omar are saying, you know what, maybe we ought to pull back a little bit and not get so crazy. Uh, in San Francisco, the bastion of conservatism, I'm being sarcastic, by the way, there was a recall election, election to get rid of some school board members. Parents were pissed off at the school board because their kids had been out of school for like a year and a half. The school budget, for some reason, while the teachers weren't in school and the students weren't in school, ballooned to $124 million from $88 million. Um, the board, And then while the children weren't in school, the board was busy trying to push this left-wing ideology, including critical race theory, critical gender theory. They wanted to paint over a mural that was painted 80 years ago and represents the life of George Washington. And they wanted to rename 44 schools. They were spending money to rename 44 schools. And those schools, some of the, a couple of those schools, include George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. They wanted to get rid of those names. Democrats, of course, said this was a right-wing attempt to rid the city of San Francisco of Democrats. Yes, folks, we're talking San Francisco. I don't even think there is a Republican in San Francisco. I think the only time there's a Republican in San Francisco is if I travel to San Francisco. Anyway, so there were about 100,000 voters and they ended up ousting all three board members. President Gabriela Lopez, Vice President Fuga, Fuga I get F A A U U G A. He should be kicked out, or she. I don't know what it is, but I think it's a he. He should be kicked out just because he spells his name F A A U U G A. That's not a type. Moliga, and Commissioner Allison Collins. Allison Collins had other problems too, because apparently her Twitter handle is filled with anti Asian. Uh, comments. What is wrong with people, I mean, tweeting every opinion that you have or shooting a, a, a video on TikTok giving every opinion you have? I mean, is this, I don't know why these guys don't understand. This is just not a great idea. Well, all these three were actually thrown out at a 70% vote, which means 70% of the people who voted said, get rid of them all. Mayor London Breed, who is having problems herself, she's not the, let's face it, London Breed, not the brightest, uh, not the brightest bulb. She really isn't very bright. Um, she gets to pick the three new board members. By the way, her ra another problem she's having, her radical district attorney, Chesa Boudin. And by the way, that's another reason he should be taken off. His name is Chesa. That's kind of weird. But Chesa Boudin, he, uh, Bowden, he's actually facing a, re uh, uh, a recall election also. And it's looking like, yeah, he's probably going to get recalled. But, you know, besides crime... London Breed has a tendency of setting up mask mandates but never wearing a mask. And she's got kind of a homeless problem, a drug problem. It's San Francisco, people are pooping in the streets. So the people are not real happy for May, with Mayor London Breed. But here's the thing. We can take a couple of things out of this. 
First thing first, of course, I don't think there's a doubt now. This is the second election they've lost. The only election they've had, a sh- they won, was the recall election against Gavin Newsom. And mind you, Gavin Newsom took that as a win. It wasn't a win. He just didn't get recalled. So I don't know how you see a recall not getting recalled in a recall election as a big win. That's why Gavin Newsom has been going crazy with the with the policies. But, I mean, the Democrats lost their asses in Virginia. Virginia was a blue state. Virginia is now a red state. They almost lost their asses. They lost their asses in New York. And they almost lost their asses in New Jersey. Now, a leftist board has just been pulled out of California. So they're going to get shellacked in November. Not to mention uh, Joe Biden's approval ratings, I think, is uh, three points south of hell. So he, he's in bad shape. The other thing is it shows that the parents are actually getting tired of this social justice crap. The reason Virginia and New York did so well was because parents got tired of their kids being taught this critical race theory, critical gender theory, um, uh, the uh, uh, and all the other social justice crap. Parents are getting tired of it. And they don't want to see this. And we're seeing this throughout the country. The reason Virginia went red is because it's still a purple state. I, I wouldn't call it a blue state. I'm always a little surprised that uh, Virginia went red, but is because of parents. And you can be a leftist and you can be a... And you could be a a leftist and you could be a liberal and everything else. And you can actually feel good about those programs they're pushing. But when you start screwing with kids, it doesn't matter what they are. They will will go right on them. And they have been. This also shows that Democrat policies suck. They don't seem to be focused on what's really important. In the school system, what's important? The kids learn how to speak how to read, how to write, how to do math. They learn science. That's what's important. But the leftist narrative, they they don't focus on that. They focus on, on weird things. And we, by the way, it's not just the school system. We see this in the federal government. We are suffering high inflation, a stagnant economy. We've got tons of foreign policy problems, including wars coming up, a nuclear-armed Iran coming up, China about to invade Taiwan. Our southern border is wide open. 154,000 illegal immigrants came through the border last month in January. And Joe Biden is tweeting about climate change. I'm not kidding you. He did this today. These guys have no clue as to what's important to the American people. I mean, climate change, you can believe in climate change and stuff, but meanwhile, I'm I'm paying $37 for hamburger a pound. I really don't care about climate change at that point. Climate change, as a matter of fact, everyone has said this that's been polled. Climate change is ranked about 12th on the important issues in this country. No one is thinking about climate change. And here's the thing. Republicans are beginning to win the culture war. Now, this may seem like, oh, thank God we're winning the culture war. The big problem Republicans had is we've never fought the culture war. Republicans were always busy. The big thing they were always concerned about was taxes. That's really the only thing. Taxes, law and order. That's about all the Republicans were thinking of. That's why a lot of people like me don't even like calling himself a Republican because I don't, I'm not happy with how the Republicans have been behaving. Republicans should have been fighting the, the, the um, culture wars. We would not be in the mess we're in today if we had fought the culture wars, fought back. Donald Trump was the first president, first Republican that I know of that actually went out and fought the culture wars, decided to go straight at them, sitting back and calling the media the fake news, enemy of the people. That's a culture war thing. Talking crap about Hollywood, that's a culture war thing. Gender, critical race theory, critical gender theory, that's a culture war thing. Republicans never fought this. We never fought it. Now we are. 
and we're winning. And it's not a shock we're winning because our belief system makes sense and can be defended. How do you, how do you, how do you defend critical gender theory? Critical gender theory is sitting back and saying, oh, well, uh, sex is malleable. You can be a boy or a girl. It just depends on how you feel today. How do you defend that? You can't. That's why there are never any debates on it. Matt, the um, a video clip from the Dr. Phil show with Matt Walsh and the two gender, uh, critical gender theory advocates showed that they couldn't they couldn't argue with them because it's not malleable and 90 a critical race theory is the same thing none of it is all we have to do as conservatives not even republicans republicans need to fight this war or they're going to lose the elections in november let's face it right now republicans can lose the election but they're going to have to lose it so yeah I, i think this is this is kind of important stuff we're looking at all right, let's take a look at the second story. This is great. This is this is not. I, I'm sorry, it's not great. But okay, do you know the name Quintez Brown? Do you know who that is? If you watch mainstream media like ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, MSNBC, I guarantee you, you have no freaking idea who he is. He was arrested on Tuesday for attempting to sa- assassinate a Kentucky mayoral candidate. Craig Greenberg. Greenberg. At first, the story was big because you have this kid that attacked a mayoral candidate, a major candidate in Kentucky. And the Greenberg turns out, of course, he's Jewish. And so the media kind of pushed this little narrative out there thinking, okay, hey, well, let's look. Let's look at this article. I, I'll, I'll let you guess what they're going to say. This is from the Las Vegas Sun. This was before anything was known about Quintez Brown. Okay, quote: While it's been reported that the activist was involved with Black Lives Matter and guns and gun safety movements, and there has been no indication yet that he has any ties to right wing organizations. The shooting comes amid a rise in threats against politicians fueled increasingly fueled by increasingly violent rhetoric coming from extremist Republicans. The New York Times documented this trend in a story last week based on the review of more than 75 indictments related to threats against lawmakers since 2016. Well, if the New York Times said it, it must be true. Uh Continuing, quote, in recent years, and particularly since the beginning of Donald Trump's presidency, a growing number of Americans have taken ideological grievance and political outrage to a new level, lodging concrete threats of violence against members of Congress, end quote. The newspaper, the newspaper wrote, adding that the threats, quote, surged during Trump's time in office and in its aftermath, as the former president's own violent language fueled a mainstream, the, a mainstreaming of menacing political speech. First off, I'd like to know what they're talking about. What did he say? I don't remember him ever saying hang anybody. I, I, anyway, and lawmakers used charged words and imagery to describe the stakes of the political mo- moment. Now, mind you, this is that's the little they knew. They thought maybe he was a BLM activist. They weren't even sure of his race at the time. And of course, what do they do? They blame those evil Republicans, right wing radical right wing white supremacists, and of course Donald Trump. There was just one problem with this whole article. And by the way, this article when we found out who Quintez Brown was. This article was heavily mocked on Twitter. This article was like, you've got to be kidding me. Well, we learned something about Quintez Brown. I hope Quintez, Quintez, I don't know. Who names their kid Quintez? Uh, Whatever. Uh, So uh, when we found out about Brown, guess what? Media was silent about it. They didn't talk about it at all. Unless you're watching Fox News, which mentions it for five minutes a day. 
you wouldn't even know what happened. Okay, so here's what we know about this guy. He's a self-proclaimed racial justice activist working for, in his words, quote, the total liberation and unification of Africa under scientific socialism, end quote. That's from him. Now, I don't know what scientific socialism is. Uh, it makes very little. I'm sure he what they they're coming through. Scientific socialism for me sounds like it'd be something like out of Karl Marx. I'd have to look that up. He's an anti-gun activist. They say gun safety. No, he's anti-gun. He was well known in political circles. He's he was actually invited to the White House by Barack Obama. He did meet Barack Obama. He has pictures with Barack Obama. He was interviewed by MSNBC's Joy Reid during the March for Life anti-gun protest in Florida about three years ago. He was the editor for the University of Louisville newspaper called The Cardinal, and he wrote an article called The Revolutionary Love Letter, which was about how the system of the United States dehumanizes people. He was a BLM activist and he openly supported Black Lives Matter. And according to the Daily Beast, last week Brown met with a representative from the Lion of Judah, a black nationalist militia group, and appeared to encourage his followers on Instagram, this is Brown, to join that black Lion of Judah group, which he believes black people, which they believe black people are the chosen people of God, not the Jews. The group also has ties. That group also has ties. Just to give you how extreme this group is, they have black ties to the black Hebrew, Hebrew Israelites. That's a, a black militia group, black nationalist militia group that believes that the true, that blacks are the true people who should be in Israel. So, question for you after reading all that does that sound like a right wing does brown sound like a right wing trump supporter that's not why the story is considered that's why this story is not considered a story anymore and no one's talking about it this is just like the christmas parade uh massacre in waukesha by that black supremacist and blm supporter is no longer a story this guy killed six people injured 50 and no one's talking about this guy anymore because he goes against the narrative. Brown goes against the narrative. The Waukesha murderer goes against the narrative. They're both BLM activists. They're both uh, 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 black nationalists, have black nationalist ties, or have been talking about black nationalism. By the way, Brown's Brown had $100,000 in bail he didn't kill Greenberg. He didn't even shoot. I don't know how you have a nine millimeter. You're standing in front of a guy and you don't hit him. He didn't hit Greenberg once. Bad shot. His ba his was given a thousand hundred thousand dollars bail. And guess what? Black Lives Matter posted the bail for him. At least they're doing something. I hope that Mayor Greenberg or hope to be Mayor Greenberg has a gun. Because do you really trust this guy to be out on bail? Here's the thing that absolutely drives me crazy, and this is one of the reasons why I, I, I brought this story up. Um, they keep screaming, the media does, about white supremacy being the biggest problem in this country, and that's just simply not true. There are three reasons why white supremacy is not a big problem in this country. First off, white people just don't care. There are white people, most white people, they have to deal with different races. They get used to it. They don't care. They don't think like that. The second reason, and there definitely aren't that many right wing white, uh, right wing white supremacists, even though they keep saying it. But the reality, conservatives are believe in happy, happy, happy. We're always happy. We deal with everybody. We don't care. I don't know why they keep calling whites. And half the time, the white supremacists are for socialism of some sort, a national socialism. That seems more left-wing to me. And by the way, have you ever met a white supremacist? I know I haven't. 
There just aren't that many out there. Finally, white supremacy, and this is the big one. White supremacy has no systemic support. You don't see corporations giving the KKK a million dollars to continue going. You don't see the media screaming about how great white supremacy is. You don't see the government making laws that that hail white supremacy or the KKK. They don't do that. They do that for Black Lives Matter. And let me throw this out there. Black Lives Matter is a socialist black supremacist group. They are a black national nationalist group. They believe blacks should have control of the entire system. That's why when blacks don't have uh, control of the entire system, they scream it's systemic racism because they believe they should be controlling the entire system. They're a socialist group. They believe in the breaking up of the breaking up of the uh, uh, nuclear family. They believe in implementing a socialist economy. They believe in critical race theory. They believe there's no way a black person can be racist, but all white people are racist. This is a black supremacist group. They believe that blacks have the moral high ground on everything. But the big thing is, they also received $90 million in donations over the last two years, mostly from corporate interests. Social media never bans them, no matter how disgusting or violent the rhetoric is. They're celebrated by the media and any violence they commit, which, let's face it, all summer of 2020, any violence they commit is excused or dismissed by the media. Some of the media even celebrate their violence. Who has more power? The Ku Klux Klan or BLM? Because of the systemic support that BLM gets, they have the power. The good news is people are beginning to see it. And they're beginning to kind of realize BLM is kind of a corrupt organization. And maybe their ideas aren't great. That's coming to the open. I mean, California and Washington State have already said BLM cannot collect donations because of the corruption. They're missing $60 million. How is that organization running $60 million? And the organization doesn't even have a leader. They don't have they have no set leadership right now. And they're missing $60 million. Yeah, they're probably got some issues. Okay. In our last story, uh the mayor of New York City, Eric Adams, is showing that he's really Even though he tout himself in a different way, he really is no different than a typical Democratic mayor. He did, I mean, in his election, I've been watching the election because I hate Bill de Blasio and I love New York and New York is now turning into a crap hole. Um, He promised to bring the city together, together, solve the crime problem, hopefully solve some of the drug issues that they have there and the mental health issues. Well, he said something really stupid. And I'm going to give him kind of the benefit of the doubt. I'll explain why in a second. But not completely. So a little background. New York has a huge crime problem. You know this. Something up like 60, 60%. It's just, it's absolutely terrible over there. It, so what Adams decided to do was go up to uh, Albany and try and get bail reform overturned. Now, what bail bail reform is the big problem, and he openly admits this. He's absolutely correct. Bail reform makes it that there is no cash bail, and you can be arrested, and unless it's a violent crime, they'll basically let you go with no bail and a summons. And of course, no one, everyone ends up going there. There was one kid, black kid, followed an Asian woman into her apartment, broke into her apartment, and stabbed her 40 times. He had been arrested 44 times. Why wasn't this guy in jail? Well, that's problem with bail reform. So he went up to Albany to get some of the le- some of the leftists to overturn bail reform so he could fix the streets. Good idea. 
I mean, you arrest somebody, they need to go to jail. They need to spend some time in jail, and that's what his idea was. Well, a trip. Well, shockingly, the trip didn't go very well, and basically, his bail reform overturn uh, legislation that he wanted to push through wasn't going to happen. Of course, the New York City media tore into him for failing to get any policies changed. In frustration, Adams decided to go off uh, on the media in the typical democratic way. Listen. If this is how this is going to be, I'm just going to come in, do my announcements, and bounce. I'm not going to, why am I even answering these questions? I'm a black man, that's the mayor. But my story has been interpreted by people that don't look like me. We got to be honest about that. How many blacks are in the editorial boards? How many blacks have determined how these stories are being written? No, 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 no. This is a very, very bad look. This is not going to get embraced by anybody. He was elected as a mayor, even though he was black. Starting to scream. He was actually he was supported by a lot of these newspapers. Sitting back and saying that the reason you're giving me crap is because I'm black is just a bad look. And by the way, I read the New York Times. I I subscribe to the New York Times. Half their editorial board is black. I know they have and the New York Times was the garbage publication that that uh, spread that 1619 project crap. So I don't want to hear from this guy. Listen, I a, a lot of people even on the left are saying, "Okay, he's frustrated." All right, this was not like him. He was frustrated. And I do like what he tried to do. The left won't co- the leftists won't cooperate with him when he needs to bring down crime. He reads the newspapers. He gets upset. The New York media can be brutal. We get this. But this is not the way to do it. He cannot make himself a victim. He Because someone in the media doesn't... Because he doesn't like a headline that someone in the media wrote. And blaming racism is not going to bring anyone together. It's not going to get him any sympathy. He is, Like I said, he is the elected mayor. People in New York elected him, and he is black. So saying it's racist not to like what I did, that's not it. I let I when he was elected, I was glad. I thought, okay, he's a moderate Democrat. He's a former cop. He hates crime, and he's not Bill De Blasio. So I thought, okay, just give this guy a break. He has good ideas. He seems to be on the right path. But mind you, I'm only cautiously optimistic with this guy. And I love New York City. I Just like I love Chicago. I would love for for, uh, Lori Lightfoot to quit being mayor of Chicago, get a real mayor into Chicago and fix the place. I love San Francisco too. I want to see these cities succeed. Washington, D.C. too. It just shows you how crappy leftist policies are. But that's why I care. But here's the thing. He's still a Democrat. And I've got to assume there's a reason he's a Democrat, not a Republican. Well, I mean, when he said last week or two weeks ago that he was considered a mini Biden when Biden was visiting, I thought, oh, God. Oh God, Biden, who's doing that crappy job? You're you're admitting you you're admitting you admire the guy. Oh my lord! And then combine that with this little temper tantrum, I begin to sit there and think to myself, nope, just another Democrat. Nothing's going to happen in New York. Nothing's going to get fixed in New York City. And that's too bad because it is a great a great city. But if he's going to sit back and he's going to start blaming race for everything that happens. Yeah, he, he'll be mayor for four years and he'll be out. Okay, visit my website at dumbassestalkingpolitics.com. Tomorrow is Dumb Friday, and I've got a ton of stories tomorrow. Um, take care. See you tomorrow. You, this is Gene, and you've listened to Dumbasses Talking Politics.